What's up guys, this is Autark here. Last month I did three stages of the new monthly Zwift Z Racing series and in this video I wanted to take a moment to reflect on all the lessons I have learned from this experience. The Zwift Z Racing series consists of monthly sets of weekly races. Each stage is scheduled for a full week or seven days, starting with Monday and running through Sunday. Races are scheduled 15 times a day and the times are consistent week to week so plenty of races are scheduled for each day to make it easy for you to find a race that fits your schedule. For each monthly series Zwift Power has a time-based journal classification which tracks riders best finishing times for each week's race and you will get ranked based on your total time. The theme for December was race like a pro. Each week racers wore a different World Tour team kit for the race. No unlocking of these pro team kit unfortunately. These are pro team kits only but we got to wear them uh, as part of the series. I missed the first stage of the series but I managed to do stage 2, 3 and 4. And by the way if you find this video helpful I would appreciate it if you take a quick second to hit that like button down below. It helps the video a lot and the channel and I really appreciate it. Okay, my first race, stage two, was on the Richmond roller coasters route wearing the Jumbo Visma team kit. I finished third in my category in that race. Surprisingly, this was my best finish in this series despite going into this one on a whim not knowing what to expect. Apparently, sometimes it's just best to not know what you are getting yourself into, right? I started the race strong and managed to stay with the front pack. However, I got too concerned about the guy who decided to make a breakaway early on in the race. I should have just let him go and kept my eyes on the group. Instead, in the back of my mind, I kept thinking if I should try to catch up to him. That guy ended up winning the race, but he also got disqualified from my category because he was just too good to be in our group. So the Zwift power disqualified him or moved him up one category. I'm not really sure exactly what happened. However, my biggest mistake was not staying with the pack to conserve my energy. Just like when riding outdoors in Zwift, when cycling in a pack, you can save energy by drafting behind other riders, which means you have to exert less energy to maintain the same speed. Staying at the pack in Zwift takes a lot of concentration. And if you take your eyes off the screen for a second, you could find yourself all the way in the back of the pack and have to exert a lot of energy to catch up with the group again. I ended up paying for it later on, but I finished the race third overall, which isn't a bad thing and was my best finishing uh, or finish time in the series. Could I have won the race? Maybe if I did a better job conserving my energy during the race, I did lose to first place by just a little over one second. So lessons learned here. Do not take your eyes off the screen and pay attention to your position in the pack. Try to conserve your energy as much as possible. Also, just don't worry about anyone who try to make a breakaway, particularly early on in the race. In most cases, the group will end up catching up. Moving on to stage three. Stage three was an interesting one. It took place on the RGV route in France wearing Team Bike Exchange Jayco. This route is flat and fast with a tiny climb around mile 7.4 then a twisty rolling ride along the river towards the end. I wasn't feeling my best during this stage, did not uh, sleep well the night before and my legs uh, have seen better days. I got the feather power up which reduced the rider's body weight by 10% for 15 seconds. Originally I planned on using that power up on the slide climb around mile 7.4 and as you see, most of the riders used it there, but I made a strategic decision right there not to use it, which I still think was a good move on my end. Nobody made a big surge during that climb, and I found myself able to stay with the group without putting in a lot of effort. The back half of this route was twisty with a lot of small rollers, with about 3.3 miles to go, and coming up on one of the rollers, I decided to break away and that is when I use my feather power up to help me break away from the group and create some separation. I made a decent separation there but a lot of roads left in that race which meant I needed to put some serious power to keep myself away from everyone for a long time and I quickly realized that my legs did not have it at that point of the race. They ended up catching up to me which was fine. I was hurting at that point, but I had enough power in my legs to keep me with the front group. I thought I could possibly do another surge towards the end and see what happens. But somewhere with less than a mile to go, my left thumb shifted my stages bike, which I was using at the time, to the small ring. 
and I did not realize that until I saw the group leaving me behind. The Sages bike does not give you any feedback when shifting unless you are using the Sages cycling app, which I wasn't for that race. You can see I was increasing my cadence, but I wasn't producing enough power. By the time I realized what was happening, it was too late and the pack was way ahead of me. And at that point of the race, it was just impossible for me to catch up to them. So lessons learned here, do not try to break away too early. The group will always catch up. Like they say, do not start eating off your plate until you finish licking everyone's plate, right? The second lesson learned is to keep your eyes on your gears to prevent small stupid mistakes from happening like what happened with the gear shifting with me there. Okay, moving on to the final stage and that is stage four. This stage route was a tricky one. It took place over in Watopia on the Three Little Sisters route. The route takes you over the hilly Titan groove before finishing at the top of the volcano climb. Overall, I thought I did a good job staying with the front group all the way and conserving my energy just like I wanted to. During this race, I received the Ghost or Invisibility power-up. If you are not familiar with the Invisibility power-up, this is an event-specific power-up that makes your avatar and name invisible to everyone for 10 seconds. I did not really have a plan on how to use this power-up and did not really think it through. I was actually hoping to get the draft power-up instead at some point, but that never happened, so I just ended up wasting it. On the volcano climb, I was with the front pack the whole way and decided to hold off on making any move until the end. As we came close to the top of the climb, with just over 900 feet to go, everyone started their attack and I was just a few seconds too late to make my move, which ended up costing me the race and I finished fifth. Lessons learned here, understand your power-ups and use them wisely. Power-ups are a feature in Zwift that allows users to temporarily boost their performance during a ride. I know we do not exactly have power-ups in real life, but Zwift isn't real life. And if used in the right place and the right time, you can gain advantage over other riders in a race. I could have used the Ghost power-up more strategically to help me break away from the pack. That could have given me a little advantage towards the end and I could have distanced myself from everyone before they realized I made my move. The second mistake I made in that race, I just waited too long to make my move. I just did. I should have made my move 10-15 seconds earlier. This is where reconning a race route and race experience can come in handy. I have done this climb a million times before, but I clearly failed to plan properly for my attack. So to summarize it, stay with the pack and conserve your energy. Keep your eyes on the screen and do not get dropped. Also, do not be too concerned about anyone who decide to make a breakaway too early in the race. The pack will most likely catch up. And that goes the other way around. Do not be that person who makes a breakaway too early unless you are confident you can keep up that power. Also, keep your eyes on the Zwifters nearby screen and be ready for that final sprint and try to anticipate their moves. Every second counts in that final minute. Use your power up wisely. Power ups are not allowed in every race, but if they have power ups in a race, do your homework and understand what they do and have a plan. And do not be afraid to switch things up in a race either. Sometimes things do not work the way that you thought they would and uh, you need to be able to adjust. And pay attention to your gear, trainer, tech and how they work. Try not to let your gear fail you. Zwift racing is tough and there will always be ups and downs along the way, but it is important to stay positive, stay focused, learn from your mistakes and never give up even when the going gets tough. And most importantly, just have fun with it. Do not be too concerned about things that are out of your control. Overall, it's been a great experience participating in the Zwift Z Racing Series for the month of December, and I hope you've enjoyed following along with me. I look forward to participating in more events like this in the future, and hope to see you guys there. Okay, hope you found this video helpful. Remember to hit the like button, and if you're still watching and have not subscribed yet, then you know what to do. Thank you guys for watching, and see you in the next video.